speaker of this morning is, is uh, Rolando Vizcay from CIMAT. This is a joint work with uh, some colleagues in France. And he will speak about estimation of covariance functions as a model selection problem. I have had the, the pleasure of uh, working several times with some uh, French uh, researchers on several topics, some of them involving uh, big data in the center of a uh, big volume and big complexity. And what I'm going to talk about is a, a small part of results about this uh, young world. Uh, in general, I've been working in, with data related with uh, elite physiology, essentially with Van Laviel. He was in Paris Sud, now he moved to, to the Cole Polytechnics. <coughs> uh, and uh, we had a, a word about the shame point detections and also some, some word about nonlinear analysis of trans series in neurophysiologies. Uh, <clears throat> Another kind of a uh, problem that I have worked with on uh, and from France, I work with uh, Nathalie, related with functional data analysis, with application in spectrometry, spectrometry mainly. And another uh, uh, long uh, work is related with uh, non-parametric estimation of covariant function. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this uh, is uh, this began with a PhD thesis that was uh, co-directed by Jean-Michel Love and Jeremy Bigot from Toulouse and by me, I was in, in the moment in Havana. And, and here, uh, the, on the line in this, uh, this kind of problem was that we have a very large uh, covariance matrix. So I want to, to try to estimate this uh, matrix. No, this is, uh, general problem. Um, well, from this, we, we developed an approach uh, formulating this kind of problem in, in LIC as a linear uh, relation problem, but matrix value, and applying some uh, linear model techniques, when well, extending some linear model techniques from a very linear uh, model to multivariate linear models, and then well, this is the start of of the of the result we have. No? Uh, well, what is the problem? Suppose we have an electrocatic processes with real value, mm -hmm. being zero without a loss of generality. And the parameter of interest is the covariance of this uh, process. Okay? And the data, suppose you observe the, 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 the process only in, in a grid of points, Tj, okay? not in the continuous uh, domain, but only in some uh, little point, okay? And we have repetition, independent copies of the, of the process. So the problem is on the basis of the data to estimate the covariant function. That's the, the general problem. And here, typically, this, uh, this grid is very large. For example, it's application in fMRI data, uh, in, in general, in neuroimaging, the covariant function uh, is a, or the, or the stochastic process is sample in a very, uh, we say, very uh, high resolution, a spatial resolution. So we have a, a very large N, and the amount of uh, repetition, small uh, N, is not so large, okay? So that's uh, the problem. And this problem can be formulated. Uh, in the following ways uh, as, a, as a linear uh, relation. First, consider that we have a basis, basic functions, given anyone, maybe kernels, splines, uh, Fourier's basis, anyone. And we approximate the stochastic process by this, uh, uh, using this basis and truncated the, the, the expansion of a curve. And we have a finite number of uh, coefficients, which are random, because the process is random. <laughs> this uh, suggests to approximate the covariance of the, uh, the 
the line processes on the basis of this approximate uh, this approximation, no? And this leads to this simple way. This mat the matrix here G uh, is a matrix uh, that is, is known that depends only on the on the basis. And the unknown parameters here are the, the coefficient of this, uh, the, the, the element, the entries of this uh, matrix, okay? Which is a definitely non-negative matrix, okay? <clears throat> but uh, going to the, the points in which we have information, is the grid of the points in the domain in which you, uh, we, we observe the, the, the process, uh, we have that the, the matrix the, the true matrix of the process in these points, the covariance matrix, uh, the true covariance matrix, uh, <coughs> consequently, is approximately with this uh, matrix. Again, this G matrix is known, completely known. It's just the, the basic function evaluated at the grid points. And the unknown parameters here, this matrix, uh, C, which is a, a, an unknown, definitely non negative matrix. And know that this matrix is precisely the expectation of the cross product of the observed vector. So it makes sense to approximate this unknown expectation, uh, taking some loss function that, that uh, uh, quantify uh, the distance between the, the expectation and the observed uh, data. The observed cross pose. Mm -hmm. So this is a this could, this could be a proposal, no? To estimate the unknown phi matrix on the basis of this law function, but this is this is completely equivalent to the least square fitting of this model. <clears throat> this is a standard linear model, except that the values are matrix. This is a matrix value regression model. It is linear with respect to the unknown, uh, C, but the, the error term is also a matrix and typically has a structure. It is not the uncorrelated components, okay? So this is the, 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 the very simple idea that we follow to transform the original problem in this kind of problem, which is simply a linear matrix relation model. Uh -huh. And on this basis, well, first, what's property if we fix this, uh, if we determine the, the, the phi according to this uh, loss function, this is a least square estimation, which property have the solution? Okay, this is very simple. Uh, the problem has a unique solution, and the solution is uh, it's just a projection. A projection of the sample covariant matrix in the observed of observed data projected according to the matrix determined by the basic function. Very, very similar to the case of a standard linear relation model. This is just a generalization for the case of a matrix value relation. Mm -hmm. And something very interesting is that uh, the resulting estimate is uh, non-negative, uh, is definite, uh, Symmetric and, and, and D and N, okay, definitely not negative matrix. And of course, after we estimate the, the, the C, then they, we have an estimate of the covariant uh, function for any point, any, any, any value, just using the, this, uh, this, this formula. But uh, in cases where we have a very, very large uh, grid of points, uh, well, it raises the problem how to determine the number of, of uh, basic functions. Okay. How to do that? Uh, well, using that this is a simply a, a linear relation model, we can try to obtain model selection techniques from the standard linear model to this uh, new setting. New setting because this is matrix value and the error are not uh, have some structure, covariance structure, okay? And the main thing thought about this is this, uh, this, uh, this theorem, or well, the, the basic result is this theorem, 
let's say, if we, ah, this is all notations, okay, let's go this. Consider the, the estimate given by this uh, penalized least square. This is fitting the data by least square, and this is a penalty term. Uh, in the standard regression model, this penalty term is uh, determined by the, the, the variance of the error multiplied by the dimension of the projection matrix. And here, uh, this, is, this is similar. This is just an extension to this new, uh, the, uh, new uh, situation. Uh, but the, 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 the constant here is not the error. It's uh, something more very more complex, okay? So this is a penalized uh, uh, setting to determine the number of components. And after the main number of components, well, we estimate the, the, the matrix uh, sigma using this uh, number of components. So say this is uh, the final estimate, okay? Determine the number of uh, basic functions by this penalization, uh, and then to, to fit the model. Well, uh, using concentration inequality techniques extended to this uh, new setting, we obtain that the, for any uh, a fixed number of the data, and you obtain a, a concentration inequality that is exactly true, no matter the, this is not asymptotic, it's exactly true. In particular, for the, when we put here Q equal to one, we obtain something similar to the standard concentration inequality for the relation uh, Standard linear regression model, no? This is this one. A term corresponding to best and a term corresponding to, 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 to variance. So, this is a, a very simple way to, to solve the trade off between best and, and variance that we face when you have a, a lot of data and the amount of a, a, a loss of parameter, in this case, a function. If any, uh, uh, the number of parameters is not finite, and, and the amount of data is finite, okay? This is a, a, this is a, I, I mentioned that it was a basic result. After that, we have to extend this to using a lasso, for example, a basic function. Using lasso, that's what I can explain. Intention. Another one here is involve a parameter. You have the role of the variance, but it's not the variance. It's more complicated. This is a general formula here. This one. Mm -hmm. This one is a parameter that depends both of the covariance matrix and of the projection matrix. Mm -hmm. And this parameter in practice is unknown. So uh, the question is, well, can we generalize this to the case in which we estimate this uh, unknown parameter? And this, this, this can be done. And I'm going to show the, all the results. You see, the, you see the, the reference that I mentioned at the beginning. And here I'm just going to, to give uh, some simple examples. Uh, this is simulated data. This is uh, the true covariance uh, function. This is two-dimensional, <coughs> what do one-dimensional the, the domain. This is a true covariance function, estimated covariance functions. And the important point you know, here, if you look just at the least, uh, uh, at the loss function, that's the sum of square. Uh -huh. Of course, when you increase the number of uh, components, the number of uh, basic function, of course you have better fit. No, that's expected. No. <clears throat> but the variance increase, uh, of course, and this is the this is the um, the curve that we obtain when you have the uh, the the loss criterion combined with comp the penalty term. This is the 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 objective function for uh, for the estimation that we use, and this one corresponds to the, to the true generalized function, and this is to the estimate. So in practice, we obtain something typically like this, that estimation of the, 
the stima of the function behaves very similarly to the true one. True one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm just going to, to finish with a very simple example. This is a, trying to predict the rainfall. This is the, the western region in, in Cuba. This is a, the, the, the province of uh, Piranda Rio. And we have just a, a very a, a few metallurgical stations in the sun. I want to predict across time and across space, interpolate the, the function. This is the, the, the position, the, the location of the recording stations. And this is uh, the prediction for um, January. Here, blue is a uh, high values. And this is what is expected, because here there are some mountains here, and the, the typical in this mountain, the, the rainfall is, uh, is uh, much more than in, in, the, in, the, in the other parts. This is the prediction for, uh, this is preservation, excuse me, this is for June, and this is the, for June, and this is for January. And this is a uh, average, Average, uh -huh, average, January, and June. Uh -huh, see. And in June, I expect well, you have a lot of, uh, of uh, rainfall here in, in the summer uh, period. Mm -hmm. uh, and this has been applied to some other kind of data, and I'm going to show this again here. So in genome data, so very difficult. Because typically, when you have a, a, a large covariance function, Typically, on the line, the covariance function, there is some kind of process. So the idea to use basis function and to convert the problem to, to linear problems is rather uh, general. And uh -huh, okay, I'm going to make it short. So let's some time for five minutes for, for, for